Toe Jam and Earl from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. Toe Jam and Earl is an action game developed by Johnson Vorsanger Productions and published by Sega for the Mega Drive. Released in 1991, it centers on the titular Toe Jam and Earl, extraterrestrials who have crash landed on Earth, as they attempt to escape the planet. Players assume the role of either character and collect pieces of their wrecked spacecraft. Toe Jam and Earl's design was heavily influenced by the computer role-playing game Rogue and took from it such features as the random generation of levels and items. It references and parodies 1990s urban culture and is set to a funk soundtrack. The game was positively received by critics who praised its originality, soundtrack, humor, and two-player cooperative mode. It attained sleeper hit status despite low initial sales and its protagonists were used as mascots by Sega. Toe Jam and Earl was followed by two sequels, Toe Jam and Earl in Panic on Funkatron and Toe Jam and Earl 3 Mission to Earth, released for the Mega Drive and Xbox respectively. The sequel's commercial and critical success was mixed. Research has suggested that series fans favor the original Toe Jam and Earl. The game again received positive reviews in 2006 when re-released for the Wii's Virtual Console, but certain critics believe that it had become dated. Contents Section 1 Synopsis Section 2 Gameplay Section 3 Development Section 4 Reception and Section 5 Legacy Section 1 Synopsis Toe Jam and Earl has been called a surreal comic satire and a daringly misanthropic commentary on earthly life. The game's protagonists, Toe Jam and Earl, have been described as a three-legged red alien and a fat orange alien, respectively. Toe Jam wears a large gold medallion and a backwards baseball cap, while Earl is marked by high tops and oversized sunglasses. Both outfits are over-the-top appropriations of 1990s urban culture. Their speech features Californian slang. The game is set to a soundtrack, which has been described as both jazz funk and rap. In the game's opening sequence, Toe Jam explains that Earl's erratic piloting abilities have resulted in a crash landing on Earth. He says that they must find the pieces of their spacecraft's wreckage to return to their home planet, Funkatron. The player guides the characters as they avoid Earth's antagonistic inhabitants and search for the debris. Should the player succeed, the final sequence depicts Toe Jam and Earl escaping the planet in their reconstructed spacecraft. Under the player's control, the characters proceed across a purple landscape that represents Funkatron and are greeted by their friends and family. Section 2 Gameplay Toe Jam and Earl takes place from a top down perspective in a 2D game world. Its gameplay mechanics were inspired by Rogue, which has led to its description as a roguelike or dungeon crawl game. The game contains both single-player and two-player cooperative modes. The latter displays a single screen when both characters are near each other, but splits it apart when they are not. Playing the game with two players reveals dialogue and jokes between the characters not heard in the single-player game. The game is set on Earth, which is represented by randomly generated islands that float in space, each one a layer above the last. The player advances to the next level by entering an elevator. The player goes back to the previous one by falling off an island's edge, which requires that the player again locate an elevator. Some islands contain pieces of spacecraft wreckage, which the player must collect to win the game. Each island is populated by antagonistic earthlings, such as phantom ice cream trucks, aggressive packs of nerds, giant hamsters, boogeymen, man-eating mailboxes, and police chickens. Certain earthlings aid the player. The game has been described as largely non-violent, as the protagonists can only attack enemies with thrown tomatoes, one of many temporary randomly generated power-ups. Power-ups are contained in wrapped presents, which are categorized by appearance. The contents of a present are invisible to the player until it is opened. Afterwards, all presents of that appearance are identified. Identification of the present's contents is a central gameplay mechanic. Each power-up has a unique effect. While one might increase the player character's running speed, another might distract enemies. 
Certain presents contain harmful power-ups, such as loss of a life or the randomizer, which hides the identity of all presents. In the game's cooperative mode, if one player character opens a present in the vicinity of another, its contents affect both characters. As players open more presents, the chances of accidentally opening the randomizer are increased, which prevents the game from becoming easier as more presents are identified. Section 3 Development Toji and Earl creator Greg Johnson became a fan of Rogue as a university student. After he left university, he worked on games for Electronic Arts, including Starflight, which was released in 1986. After the completion of Starflight 2, Johnson conceived Toejam and Earl, first the characters, then the plot, while on a beach in Hawaii. The idea was a combination of Rogue's gameplay concepts and a lighter version of Starflight's science fiction themes. Johnson met programmer Mark Vorsanger through a mutual friend while walking on Mount Tam in 1989. He related the concept of Toejam and Earl to Vorsanger, and the two resolved to make the game together. They formed Johnson Vorsanger Productions, and serious work on the game began soon after. Their status as commercial game designers allowed them to meet with Sega of America, and they used cards covered in landscape drawings to demonstrate their idea of randomly generated levels. Sega marketing manager Hugh Bowen was immediately interested in the concept. Sega wanted innovative games and new mascots to compete with Nintendo. The game's small development team was composed of Johnson's previous colleagues, and its music was composed by John Baker. The team's goal was to make a humorous game that was original, easy to understand, and offered an immediate response to the player's actions. The designers wanted to include a two-player mode so that they could play together and consider ToeJam & Earl a two-player game with a one-player option. While Sega believed that hardware issues would prevent the feature from working, Vorsanger was able to successfully implement the feature. In a 1992 interview with Sega Visions, Johnson stated that the characters ToeJam & Earl evolved as reflections of his and Vorsanger's personalities. Vorsanger disagreed and called the characters two different aspects of Greg's personality. Steve Purcell had stated that he contributed character designs to the game. Section 4. Reception Toji Minoru received positive reviews, which Bill Paris of UGO described as almost unanimous critical acclaim. However, Sega deemed it a commercial failure due to low initial sales. The game built a cult following through word of mouth, and it was further aided by the Mega Drive's Christmas 1991 sales spike, caused by the release of Sonic the Hedgehog. Toejam and Earl was later considered a cult success. Mean Machines found the game addictive and original, but found fault with its slow-paced combat. One of the reviewers said, Not everyone will like it. It's not normal enough for mass appeal, but I think it's destined to become a massive cult classic. GamePro called the game's originality incredible, and praised its graphics, music, and humor. Entertainment Weekly praised the absolutely hilarious sound effects and music. Jeff Cezatry of Boy's Life called it another hot game for the Mega Drive, alongside Sonic the Hedgehog. Ed Martinez of Game Informer commended the game's soundtrack and unique concept, but found it to be too easy. A review published in both the Chicago Tribune and Rome News Tribune likened Toejam and Earl to an outer space rap version of Abbott and Costello. The reviewers called it the funniest game we've seen in a long time and praised its soundtrack, graphics, and action. The Toronto Star acclaimed the game's hilariously designed split-screen two-player mode and said, If you've got a Sega Genesis system, you simply must check out this awesome rap-and-roll game. Sega Visions praised the game's no repetitive action and said, This is the zaniest game that ever rocked Sega's Genesis system. Several months after the game's release, Mega ranked it the 13th best Mega Drive game in its all-time top 100 feature. The magazine praised the game's superbly manic and zany action, and deemed it both original and insane. Toejam and Earl was re-released on the Nintendo's Wii Virtual Console in 2006. Official Nintendo Magazine scored the game 85%, and praised its humor, originality, and two-player mode. However, 
the reviewer believed that the game's enjoyability had diminished with time. GameSpot felt that the game's 1990s idioms were outdated, but that the gameplay, particularly the two-player mode, was still enjoyable by modern standards. Jeremy Parrish of 1UP found the game's two-player cooperative mode more enjoyable than its single-player, and described the graphics and sound as oddly primitive. Parrish considered it one of the best games to hit VC to date. Eurogamer's reviewer negatively received the game, and believed its gameplay to be unsatisfyingly and overly slow. IGN called the game's visuals a mixed bag, and derided the slow pace, but praised its unpredictability and believed that its sound design was one thing you absolutely can't fault. Section 5. Legacy Toji Mineral became one of Sega's second-tier mascots alongside Sonic, and one of the Mega Drive's key exclusive franchises. The characters appeared in a spin-off light gun game, Ready Aim Tomatoes, developed by Johnson Borsanger Productions as one of six minigames for the Menacer six-game cartridge. In early 1992, the developers began work on a sequel to Toe Jam and Earl, and spent three months expanding on the original game's concept by adding indoor areas and more terrain types. Sega was not impressed by the sequel, and believed it to be unmarketable. The team redesigned it as a platform game, as Sega was inclined to publish games in this genre. The game, entitled Toe Jam and Earl in Panic on Funkatron, was highly anticipated and was a commercial and critical success when it was released in 1993. However, fans of the original game were disappointed by the change in design to a perceived generic style. Due to poor North American sales of the Sega Saturn, Sega's next generation video game console, the Toe Jam and Earl franchise was neglected. A Toe Jam and Earl game planned for the Nintendo 64 was cancelled, but a third installment, Toe Jam and Earl 3 Mission to Earth, was released for the Xbox in 2002. The release returned to the concepts of the original game, but generated mixed reviews and poor sales. Toe Jam and Earl has been called weird, strange, and thoroughly odd. Critics have difficulty determining a genre for the game. It has been called a platform game and roguelike, as well as action and action-adventure. While Toe Jam & Earl's success did not match that of the Mega Drive's other popular titles, it has been considered a classic and a cult game. Prior to Toe Jam & Earl 3's conception, research by its developers found that the original Toe Jam & Earl was preferred over its sequel. In an IGN survey, 65% of respondents cited it as their favorite of the three games. The game was set to be re-released on Xbox Live Arcade, after winning a poll arranged by Sega, but this is uncertain because Greg Johnson owns the rights to the characters rather than Sega. The notion of a Toe Jam & Earl game for the Nintendo DS failed to generate interest from publishers, but Johnson has reiterated the possibility of such a game in the future. You have been listening to Toe Jam & Earl from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation License, available at www.gnu.org slash copyleft slash fdl.html. This was recorded by Wikipedia user Mangst on November 14th, 2009. Thanks for listening.